And you have been watching pictures there of people in Baghdad's Tahrir Square celebrating the killing of senior Iranian commander Qasem Soleimani by US forces. I'm Stan Grant here in Doha, of course, taking over this breaking coverage, live coverage of this strike by American forces inside Iraq. Now, we've had information, now confirmation from the Pentagon that US President Donald Trump, Donald Trump had ordered this strike inside Iraq that has killed a commander of Iran's elite Quds force. Now, he was killed in this strike just next to the city's airport. The Quds force is responsible for Iran's overseas and clandestine military operations. Now, also killed was Iraqi militia commander Abu Mahdi al mohandas He was the deputy leader of Iraq's Hasht Shabi militia. The Pentagon, as I was saying, has confirmed now the death of Soleimani. In its statement, it says it was done on the orders of the US president. The killing has also been confirmed by Iranian State TV. And for that, we go to Dorsa Jabari, who joins us on the phone from Tehran. Dorsa is there. No, we seem to have lost Dorsa. We'll go to the United States, where Gabriel Elizondo is standing by. Gabriel, can you tell us more about what the US has confirmed here, what the Pentagon has confirmed here with this strike? Yeah, it was a pretty remarkable uh, Department of Defense uh, statement about this. It's a uh, good two and a half paragraphs long. I won't read the entire thing again, but uh, the key points that stand out in here is obviously the United States Department of Defense confirming that the strike that killed Soleimani was at the direction of the President of the United States. That should not necessarily be a surprise given the, uh, the high uh, a profile of Soleimani, but also in the statement of, uh, by the Department of Defense, they really pointed out how Soleimani, in their view, was actively planning more uh, attacks on Americans and American diplomats in the region. There was a real sense in this statement uh, that uh, uh, Soleimani and his Quds force per, were, were a, uh, uh, an immediate threat to American lives in the region. Uh, I'll read part of it. General Soleimani was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members in Iraq and throughout the region. General Soleimani and his Quds force were responsible for the death of hundreds of American and coalition service members and the wounding of thousands more. Again, that's two sentences from the statement just confirmed uh, by the Department of, De of Defense here. It's important to point out uh, that uh, beyond this statement, we have not heard anything officially from the White House or the President the of the United line. States. He did tweet a picture of the American flag, uh, but beyond that, no official statement from the President, uh, Donald Trump. He's at his Mar-a-Lago mm. resort, still in the middle of a vacation uh, there. Also, nothing from the State Department either. But clearly, this is a major, major uh, strike by the Department of Defense. Clearly, it was at the direction of the president. Who, of course, is the commander-in-chief and would be giving the direction in, in, in this case. Um, Gabriel, I want you to stay there, and I'll be going to Dorsa Jabari in Iran in just a moment for the reaction from there. But let's place this into context as well, because we had seen in recent days those protests inside Iraq, in Baghdad, protesters linked to the popular mobilisation forces, that militia linked to Iran, who marched directly to the American embassy, set fire to the area, had daubed the area with graffiti, had been chanting anti-American slogans. So place this into a broader context of what we've seen in recent days, the American strikes, the protests, and now this action we've seen carried out today. Yeah, for sure those protests uh, that reached the doors of the US embassy uh, shook Washington. There's no doubt about that. This was uh, uh, protesters or Iranian-linked uh, militia that got through a heavily fortified green zone and got through multiple layers of checkpoints and multiple layers of security to get right up to the door of uh, the most heavily guarded and biggest and you might even say most important U.S. diplomatic mission in the entire world, and that's the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. That shook the Pentagon, I think it shook the State Department, and I think it shook the White House as well. And I think what you're seeing here is a reaction to that. There was a clear uh, understanding, I think, over the last uh, few days since this has all transpired, uh, that uh, 
the U.S. had the option of striking. Uh, there were probably multiple options presented to President Donald Trump, and he clearly uh, went with the most severe one. Uh, this is, uh, you, you can't put this or, or overstate this enough. It should be pointed out that over the past 10 years or so, uh, Iran, uh, excuse me, Israel has reportedly had Soleimani in their crosshairs mm. and, and were going to strike him. But in both cases, President Obama at the time and President George W. Bush convinced the Israelis not to because killing him w could potentially set off incredible ramifications. Now he has been killed. There was a different uh, choice that was made by President Donald Trump. Mm. So uh, uh, the U.S., just to summarize here, the U.S. this week has sent 750 uh, paratroopers to the region uh, to buffer security. They have several thousand more troops on standby for deployment. Uh, we've reached out to Fort Bragg and CENTCOM to see if any more troops are being deployed to the region. And so far, uh, no response on mm. that yet. But clearly, without a doubt, this is a major escalation. We'll have to hear from the president what he has to say about this, presumably when he announces more about this decision. Indeed, Gabriel, thank you for that. And, of course, we'll come back to you for any further developments from the United States. Let's cross now to Dorsa Jabari, who joins us on the phone from Tehran. We're just listening to Gabriel Elizondo there, uh, Dorsa, who is now confirming, of course, that the Pentagon has said that this strike was carried out under the orders of President Trump and also accusing Qasem Soleimani of planning attacks on American diplomats and American service personnel. Before we get to the detail of that, for those who are just joining us now, take us back a step and tell us who Qasem Soleimani was, his role in the Iranian military and his significance within the Iranian regime. Certainly. Uh, Qasem Soleimani is the head of the Quds Force, which is the branch within the Revolutionary Guard that deals with external um, missions outside of Iran. So they're cha tasked with um, foreign uh, missions. So they deal with Iran's foreign policy when it comes to military outside of the country. Now, he was appointed by the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei as the head of the Quds Force at some point in the early 90s. We're not exactly sure when his appointment took place, but he was a man who fought in the Iran-Iraq war, and then he was part of the Revolutionary Guards in his province for many years, and he rose up the ranks very quickly. Um, and he's one of the, he was one of the closest confidants and allies and friends of the Supreme Leader. He was uh, awarded a, uh, the highest medal of honor by the Commander-in-Chief Ayatollah Ali Khamenei just last year. Um, for his services that he's uh, conducted on behalf of Iran. Um, he is known as a very um, reclusive uh, figure inside the country. Um, there are tales about him, of people who met him. Just coming into the office uh, this morning, I was speaking to the security guards at my building, the taxi driver. He is, his name is synonymous with Iranian national pride, no matter what he's been labeled outside the country. Uh, no, and inside Iran, no matter which uh, side you lean on politically, uh, Qasem Soleimani or Hajj Qasem, as he's known, um, is a figure who uh, resonates with the Iranians as somebody who has had the best interest of Iran at heart. Just, he has been instrumental in preventing ISIL from setting foot on Iranian soil over the past few years. Uh, when I was speaking to my taxi driver, uh, we were listening to state radio on, on the way in. There is already uh, songs of mourning. The announcer saying that it is with great um, sadness that we announced the martyrdom of Qasem Soleimani in Iraq and condolences to all of the Iranian people in the nation. The taxi driver was so shocked he could barely speak, and he had to actually pull over and take a minute before he could continue his ride. Um, and he said that this is uh, something that they never, people never believed could happen, because there is a aura of um, mystery and grandiose about Qasem Soleimani that people spoke about. Um, so now with this 
news of his death, of his assassination, there is a tremendous amount of shock and anger that will mm. follow in the next few hours that we will see, not only in Iran, but across the Middle East. Um, he was instrumental in Iran's policies in Lebanon. His uh, close relationship with Hassan Nasrallah of uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon is well documented. The two have had numerous occasions where they've been photographed together alongside the Supreme Leader. His relationship with Muqtadar al-Sadr of uh, the Sadr family in Iraq is also uh, noteworthy. He has spent a lot of time in the holy city of Najaf. Um, so he is very well known across the region, both within the political realms and the uh, military uh, circles of this region. Um, he is somebody who is also known to be very kind, very humble. Um, he was, I should say. I have heard stories of people who were on plane rides that he was on, and he spent the entire time speaking to people about his experiences, um, about his movements. He uh, comes from a very humble background in Hamadan province, um, and he is somebody who is uh, not immune to the danger of his life, in, within his life. He has had many assassination attempts carried out um, and failed. And there was also an attack even within Iran. There was an attempt on his life just last year. Um, there was a, uh, the intelligence ministry and the revolutionary guards uh, released a statement saying that they foiled an attack of a bombing of a mosque, which he attends in his hometown, um, that there were people, there was a, a network of people that were behind this attempted uh, assassination. They purchased property near the mosque. Um, where he goes for service whenever he's in his hometown. They were trying, they found explosives in the basement of this mosque. So he, he's not somebody who uh, needs to the dangers of his life and his job. Um, and but this, you know, the Supreme Leader spoke yesterday saying, specifically responding to Donald Trump, uh, tweeting about Iran and the attacks in Iraq and the latest developments there. The Supreme Leader said that that man who tweets that we cannot do a damn thing, and now this has happened, and mm. it's a direct um, retaliation, really, to what the Supreme Leader had mm. tweeted on uh, Wednesday. It is likely to have far-reaching consequences. Yeah. I mean, Qasem Soleimani is just beyond uh, a well-known figure in Iran. Dorsa, thank you. Of course, you'll stay on the line because we'll be coming back to you periodically to get the latest from there, particularly if there's anything official coming out of Iran. We'll go back to Gabriel Elizondo now in Washington, D.C. Gabriel, you're hearing more about response from inside the United States to, to this strike and the killing of Qasem Soleimani. A little bit more. We still haven't heard from the President of the United States. We still haven't heard from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and we still have not heard from the Secretary of Defense, Mr. Esper. Uh, so we're having to rely on information from the highest ranking government officials that are speaking about this. And another one just tweeted, that would be Senator Lindsey Graham, a Republican and a very, very close ally of the President Donald Trump. In fact, Lindsey Graham was just in Mar-a-Lago with the President, uh, and he actually might still be there with the President. He just tweeted, and I want to read you what he said. This is from uh, Lindsey Graham, the U.S. Senator. Wow, the price of killing and injuring Americans has just gone up dr drastically. Major blow to Iranian regime that has American blood on its hands. Soleimani was one of the most ruthless and vicious members of the Ayatollah's regime. He had American blood on his hands. I appreciate President Donald Trump's bold action against Iranian aggression. To the Iranian government, I say, if you want more, you will get more. Uh, so this kind of summarizes a little bit of one side of what we're hearing from uh, some lawmakers that are sort of, if you will, taking a victory lap, applauding uh, Donald Trump for this, uh, for this uh, strike. Uh, but we're also seeing others uh, in Washington, on Twitter and elsewhere, also really worried about how this could escalate and what comes next. But uh, clearly you're seeing there from Senator Lindsey Graham uh, sort of a, a, a victory, if you will, at least the way he sees this.
Thank you, Gabrielle. Of course, you'll stay with us as well. Just to bring you up to date, if you are just joining us, we are discussing the strike by US forces, confirmed now by the Pentagon and on the orders of President Trump inside Iraq, which has killed a senior figure in the Iranian regime. Qasem Soleimani, the man who was the commander of Iran's elite Quds forces, also killed was Iraqi militia leader Abu, Mal, uh, Abu Mahdi al Mohandas, who is linked to uh, militia inside Iraq and, of course, is linked also to Iran. Let's go to Baghdad now. Simona Faltine is going to join us live from there. And there has always already been a response on the streets, Simona, people who have been out there celebrating, indeed, the death of Qasem Soleimani. Tell us more about that. Indeed. Uh, well, the people who are in Baghdad's Tahrir Square, uh, of course, these are anti-government protesters who have been camping out there uh, for months now uh, to protest against the government, but also against Iranian influence in Iraq. And uh, the people have been basically camping out there. So they were already present when uh, this strike took place. And what we've been seeing is them uh, celebrating in the square, uh, basically welcoming uh, the death of Qasem Soleimani and uh, Abu Mahdi al Mohandis, both of whom are uh, seen as uh, basically the embodiment of uh, Iranian influence in the country. Now, of course, uh, these protesters have nothing to do with the crowds that we have seen uh, march on the U.S. Embassy uh, a couple of days ago. Those were crowds of the Popular Mobilization Forces, which mm. is this paramilitary group that is um, uh, basically very closely linked to Iran. And uh, Abu Mahdi al Mohamdis was the second in charge of that group. We're likely to see a very different reaction uh, from from that side. Uh, it remains to be seen what exactly it will be, but many people here in Baghdad uh, are fearing that there will be retaliation, that there will be escalation with uh, the members and supporters of the popular mobilization forces uh, reacting uh, to the deaths of, of their uh, main leaders, basically. And uh, this could be perhaps uh, through additional demonstrations. This could be another attempt to once again storm uh, the U.S. Embassy, or uh, perhaps we're likely to see uh, additional rocket attacks on uh, bases and locations where U.S. personnel are based, which uh, we have been seeing uh, quite a few of over the past uh, few mm. months. But what is very important is that there will be very different reactions. The majority of Iraqis are likely uh, to welcome this because they have uh, basically uh, disapproved of Iranian influence in the country. But then we're likely to see a very different reaction from the popular mobilization forces. Yeah, and Simona, are you learning anything more about why Qasem Soleimani was indeed inside the country? There has been some speculation that he was there to oversee this political transition, this political vacuum that has appeared inside Iraq now, particularly the recent nomination for prime minister of someone very much linked to Iran. Are you hearing anything more about that? Well, Qasem Soleimani has been a frequent visitor to Baghdad, not just now, but on many previous occasions. And uh, especially during the past uh, three months of anti-government protests, he was actually uh, seen as being somebody who was leading, uh, in a way, the government's response and crackdown on these protests by basically creating special security cells to uh, target demonstrators uh, through either assassinations, through snipers, through kidnappings. Um, so he's somebody seen as uh, basically coming in and out of Baghdad as he pleases and as somebody who has had a vast uh, amount of influence over the Iraqi government. Many Iraqis feel that uh, the prime minister has not been the one who has been really in charge of this government and it is figures like Qasem Soleimani uh, who have actually been running the show. So his presence in Baghdad is by no means surprising. It has been something uh, that has been happening for a long time. Simona, thank you so much for that. And, of course, we'll come back to you as we continue to follow this breaking news. We want to take you now to Lawrence Korb, who is a former U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defence, and he joins us via Skype from Washington, D.C. Nice to have you with us as well. We've been discussing the significance of Qasem Soleimani, clearly someone who cast an enormous shadow and was linked at the highest level uh, in Iran, a close personal confidant of the Ayatollah Khamenei. So how do you now assess his death and the implications from this? Well, I think the implications are very strong for the United States saying, given what you've done here, 
you know, by killing an, uh, killing an American and, and wounding several others, we are going to make you pay a price. And I think what happened was this was a target of opportunity. I don't know how long Soleimani's visit was planned, but what, with the events over the weekend, the demonstrations against the American embassy, and then knowing that he was coming, I think that the United States decided this is how we can send a very strong message Without killing very many people, we'll kill the two le the two leaders, and that will send the uh, se send the message. And and as I mentioned earlier, three hours before this, Secretary of Defense Esper said, you know, we're going to take action, preemptive action, to make sure nothing like this happens again. We don't know if if Soleimani was planning more attacks or anything, but the fact of the matter is, this sends a signal, I think, to Iran. You know, don't go any further. We don't want any more American troops uh, uh, killed. And I think they convinced President Trump to do it because he does not want to see this get out of hand. And I think people said, if you do this, mm. that will send a very strong message, and maybe this, uh, the, these uh, killings will stop. Is it a strong enough message, though, that Iran will not retaliate, particularly retaliate? through its proxies, its militia proxies inside Iraq, and that we don't see a further escalation. Is that not the risk here? Well, there's certainly a risk. I mean, when you do something, you know, like we did. In fact, there was a risk once we had the attack where we killed the, you know, 24, 25 mm. uh, Iraqis who were part of the popular uh, mobilization front and wounded several others. There was a risk, uh, you know, when, when that happened. But the fact of the matter is that right now the ball is in Iran's court, and I don't think that they want an all-out fight with the United States. They will probably, as we discussed earlier, maybe do some asymmetric uh, type of, uh, of, of, of attacks where they would uh, cause uh, uh, more problems throughout the, uh, throughout the region, whether it's in Syria or, 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 or Lebanon. Uh, but basically, I think they're the ones that are going to have to make the decision, because if they want to get into an all-out war with the United States, a large con con uh, a conflict, that's not going to benefit them, given, mm. you know, the economic problems that, uh, that they have. There is, of course, an alternative to all-out conflict with the United States, and that is continuing to try to wear America down and making the United States increasingly unpopular in Iraq, get America out of Iraq. And we've even seen with protesters who have been anti-Iran or anti-the Iraqi government are not necessarily pro the United States. Is that not also a potential consequence of this, testing the resolve of the United States and America's future inside Iraq. Yeah, there's no doubt about the fact that the Iraqi parliament is going to vote. It's going to be interesting to see what this event does uh, in terms of the, the vote. The second largest bloc in the Iraqi parliament is a pro-Iranian uh, pro group. And if they would vote and they ask the United States to leave, obviously we would have to. Uh, and I think the Iranian government is not happy because we had the other attack without coordinating with them. It's going to be interesting to see if Secretary Pompeo called the prime minister a body before he, you know, before he did this like he did it the, the last time. We haven't heard anything about that yet, but I think that's going to be interesting. And, you know, it's also interesting. In fact, this must have been, you know, coming up because Pompeo canceled his trip to Ukraine to stay there. So he must have known, they must have had intelligence about Soleimani coming and they decided to take action. Lawrence Corb, thank you so much and hopefully we'll get to speak to you again as this story continues to develop. Lawrence Corb there joining us from the US via Skype. Now, of course, we are continuing our breaking news coverage of this news out of Iraq that the United States has carried out a strike on the orders of President Trump that has targeted significant figures within the Iraqi militia and also the Iranian military, including Qasem Soleimani, a major general in the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and the commander of the elite Quds Force. We'll go back to the United States now, where Gabriel Elizondo is standing by in Washington, D.C. And, Gabriel, you've been following the response and there has been 
twe tweets sent out by various members uh, of government, politicians and so on. What's the latest you can give us from there? Yeah, I want to give you the latest. So we just got a statement here that just came in to us. Uh, this comes from the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, this is Senator uh, Jim Reich. Uh, this is important because he kind of summarizes what the feeling is of most Republican lawmakers here in Washington right now is, and that's congratulations to the President Donald Trump. In fact, he starts the statement by saying, uh, uh, congratulations to President Trump on his decisive action and the successful outcome of this operation. He goes on to say uh, how uh, uh, Soleimani was responsible for the deaths of Americans, and that's why he was targeted. He finishes his statement by saying, on behalf of every American service member and service woman who have either been killed or injured due to an Iranian-provided IED or rocket in Iraq over the years, today justice was done. Soleimani was responsible for the weapons program that caused those casualties and injured injuries with those who used those treacherous and cowardly devices. Again, we're, we're talking about this senator here because we have not heard directly from the president of the United States yet. We have not heard from the secretary of state, uh, Mike Pompeo, or the, uh, uh, the leader of the Department of Defense, uh, secretary of defense either. And so we're having to rely on the statements now uh, from the highest ranking lawmakers reacting to this. And I think this really summarizes what we've seen from others, such as Lindsey Graham as well. Uh, really a, a victory, if you will, is sort of the... Uh, is what were the sense we're getting from lawmakers in Washington here uh, this evening. Gabriel, thank you for that.